Hello and welcome to another edition of the Backman Report, where every week Fred Alvader and I check in on the world of golf to bring you the latest news, insights, analysis, interviews, recaps, previews. Hey, we cover anything and everything golf. In other words, if it happened in golf, we have it for you. And today we're going to be talking about the Ryder Cup, but specifically Team USA. So if it's Ryder Cup, we have to have the European golf guru, Kieran Clark, with us. So I'm going to bring him first because we're going to talk about Team USA, and that's Fred Alvader's expertise. We're going to bring him later on that. So Kieran, hi, how are you today? I'm very good, Carlos, and obviously looking forward to the Ryder Cup. And of course, Team USA, really the pressure's on them. I mean, this is supposed to be, this is, this is their week. They have the strongest team on paper, the best team in the history of the world rankings going back to the mid 80s. The youngest team they've had in many years, all these new guys on the scene, they're playing at home. They've got a 99.9% .9 home crowd behind them. They can't lose this time, surely Carlos, can they? You know what, they might. Did you say that the pressure's on them now? Pressure, <laughs> the overwhelming weight of a nation, Carlos, is what on the is shoulders this? of Team USA. How can you cope with that? What is pressure, I mean, Bryson DeChambeau can carry any pressure at any time. I mean, he can he can lift it. But anyway, he can carry the pressure, but can he carry a partner? That's going to be the question. Uh, we have that question for Fred, who's coming on now. Fred, uh, the Team USA, the out of qualifiers were Colin Morikawa, Dustin Johnson, Patrick Cantley, maybe the hottest player in the world right now. Bryson DeChambeau, Brooks Kepka, Justin Thomas, and then the Captain Spicks, Daniel Berger, Harris English, uh, Tony Finau, Sander Chaffley, Scotty Scheffler, and Jordan Spieth. 12 players, the eight of the top 10 world ranked players there. Uh, hi, how are you today? To, uh, and first of all, and then how about Team USA? They have the best players. Once again, does it really matter? Pressure. We don't feel no stinking pressure. We got, we, I'll just give you some numbers here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 13, 16, and oh, yeah, Scotty Scheffler, 21. That's the world rankings of my team. Okay. We're going to blow these Europeans clear back to the sunny banks of wherever they're going back to in, in Europe, someplace, in Spain and Ireland and all these places that they come from. I don't see Carlos. These guys, the American team is loaded. Stricker went out and got some bombers to for six picks. Who needs six picks? Why do we have six picks? Most of these guys were on the list anyhow inside the 12, so I don't know why they worried about six picks. Um, kind of a little bit of the surprise was to me that uh, he picked Daniel Berger instead maybe of a, a Kevin Na or a Webb Simpson or, or even a Patrick Reed who they left off the team. And then my guy, you know, I keep I keep politicking for Kevin Kisner, but they left him off again. So my prediction always is if you leave Kisner off, you're going to lose, right? Well, it may happen. But back to this a little bit, okay? So you you named the players. Um, you've got Colin Morikawa, who is just solid uh, from every place, from T in the fairway, on the greens, chipping. I mean, he's, he's just solid in every aspect. Dustin Johnson, when he's engaged, there's nobody better in the world, really. I know Rom's number one, but Dustin's right there at number two. Uh, Patrick Cantley, uh, he's on a high. He's playing with a lot of confidence. Bryson DeChambeau, he's always on a high. He's always got a lot of confidence. He's going to hit those bombs out there no matter what. And then his buddy Brooks Kepka. Brooks says, well, I don't know. I hit my, I get my point and I go home. I don't, you know, I don't know what these guys worry about. Uh, it's just, you know, I do my thing. And why do we got to go to this meeting and that meeting? I, uh, I don't know. And then, and then Justin Thomas, he's not too bad of a player either. So, you know, we got all these guys, but the problem comes from me as we, the U S team always is, seems like it's always behind after the first two days in these team deals. Um, as foursomes especially. And so I was racking my brain, trying to come up with some ideas of who I would pair together. And so I'm going to, I'm going to lay these out and then you guys can take a shot at them a little bit, but for foursomes, I'm going to write right off the bat. I'm going to put Patrick Cantley and Xander Shoffley out there right away. Okay. Number one off the tee. I'm going to get them out there. We're going to get a point right away. Then I'm going to put, I was doing this before I knew what the pod system was, and I'll go into that in a minute too, but 
Uh, I, I was going to put Scotty Scheffler and Jordan Jordan Spieth out there. One to get Scotty Scheffler some, just to get him in there and get him playing. And I don't know, we might lose that match, but you might strike some fire there. You know, you something might happen. Then you got Harris English and Morikawa together. I, these guys are both steady. They're low energy guys. They just, you know, they just plot along, do their thing. I like them together. And then I put JT with Kepka uh in foursomes because kepka is a bulldog he will fight on every shot i know he comes off flippant in uh, in the media but he's not that way he he plays hard and so does jt so i like that together my four ball thing is a little bit different but for foursomes i want to get at least a point and a half possible a split would be great in foursomes uh, both on both days friday and saturday if i could come out of foursomes uh, four and four out of that. That would be fantastic. So, guys, my point is the European, the U U.S. team has some really young guys. We got some new blood in there. We've got some long bombers. They've got the rough cut down at Whistling Straits. They're basically rough is kind of non-existent, uh, so they can lay it out there and not be worried about it unless they lose it over the cliff or something. But uh, I don't know if if the guys watch what they're doing in foursomes and can get a couple points and foursomes, I think they might be able to run away with it. What do you think, guys? Well, the U.S. has six rookies. That's the most for the Americans since uh, 2008 when they won in Valhalla. So maybe that's the trick for them, right? Let's get the rookies in. But those rookies are really not that much rookies. If you come to think about it, uh, those include Colin Marikawa. He was an amateur when last Ryder Cup was played, but since then, what he has done, uh, just two majors at WGC. And not only that, he led the U.S. standings in his first year of eligibility. Uh, and it includes a FedEx Cup champion, Patrick Cantley, and Olympic gold medalist, Sander Shoffley. By the way, they were formidable at the formidable team at the President's Cup in Australia two years ago. So that goes to your team there, Fred. Uh, but Kieran, uh, what do you think? I mean, this, those, uh, I don't know if you want to go that route starting with the foursome uh, with unestablished other than uh, maybe uh, Cantley and Shoffley. Uh, I don't think if you want to go that inexperienced against a fully experienced team that the Europeans are going to throw at you right away at the foursome. So, uh, you know, Dustin Johnson, I don't see how you can leave him out. Jordan Spieth, I don't see how you can just pairing with a, with a rookie there. Uh, JT, to me, is the true Captain America, so definitely he has to be there. But I, I would go with that JT Jordan Spieth yeah. match uh, duo there. Uh, but how you see things going, um, uh, Kieran? Yeah, I think there's two standout pairings. I think one is Xander Schofley and Patrick Cantley. They were great, as you say, in Australia at Royal Melbourne two years ago. Uh, two brilliant players, uh, two California guys. I think they'll do really well together. And bringing together the two two best pals, you know, Spieth and Thomas. Um, they were they were one of the few bright spots for America in France three years ago. And I think they'll be a great partnership in both forces and four balls, and they can be very hard to beat. And you won't have those banker uh, pairings that you can rely on, much like Europe had three years ago. You have one pairing as they had with Fleetwood and Molinari that can go out and win every match. And that's a huge foundation uh, to success. And if those two pairings for the US, I think we'll see. Potentially, you in three of the four sessions, maybe even all four sessions, depending on how it goes. You know, Spieth, Thomas, Cantley, Shofley. If they could win, you know, maybe five points between them over the first two days, that's a great foundation for the rest of the team to go on and play really well and potentially you know, win the Ryder Cup back and get that crucial 14 and a half points. But the American team is really strong. I know people are talking about Kevin Na or Billy Horschel or you know Kevin Kisner, but yeah, I think. The guys that Steve Stricker ultimately picked, I think they're all pretty good. And I think it's hard to, you can pick all of them, but you can, it has to be only, it can only be 12 in the end. I think it's hard to argue against the guys that he picked ultimately. I think they were all had a good case. And uh, particularly on this golf course, you know, big golf course, burly golf course, the weather this week's to be cooler, uh, breezy at times. So, you know, it's going to be a, a bit of a challenge as well. And trying to get the ball out there could be a big asset. So I, I think it's really interesting. And, for me, it's all about Team USA this week. You know, they are the ones who set the tone. They set the atmosphere. They have the big crowd behind them. They have the, you know, the, the youth on their side. And yes, they have rookies, but they're experienced players. But more so, they're coming in here with no bad memories. You know, 
you know, guys in the past, yes, a lot of US players in the last 20 years have had a lot of losing experiences in their era. You know, from Tiger and Phil, Jim Furyk, those kind of guys. They've lost a lot of matches. These guys are coming in fresh and new and they have a big crowd behind them. They will embrace that atmosphere. And they're all relatively the same age. And I think this is nothing people can have, have, have overlooked so far. That's a very young team. You know, the oldest player is Dustin Johnson at 37. Um, and beyond that, you have Tony Fina in his early 30s. So it's a young team. And a lot of these guys have kind of grown up in the same environment in terms of college. You know, they're all at college roughly the same time. They competed in that environment. They came for the amateur game together. They've gone tour together. There's only you know two or three years between you know, most of these players, and you know, maybe that can work in their favour. Uh, we'll wait and see. You know, yes, there's some potentially strong egos in there. You know, Deschambeau, Kepka, what are you going to do with that? But I mean, it's it's one of those things that that's a challenge for Steve Stricker. But I think these guys, if they can embrace you know the pressure, the environment, and if they play well, they'll be hard to beat. So I think it's all about them. You know, Europe will play well. Europe's fantastic in the Ryder Cup. Very experienced team. They know what to expect. The big crowd will intimidate them. Um, they'll play well. They'll be competitive in most of the matches. If the US plays to their ability and plays to their absolute potential, then they'll be very hard to beat. So for me, it's all about them. If they come out and play strongly, get a lead, get the big crowd to rock us and behind them. Remember, this is a big crowd in Wisconsin that doesn't really get much in the way of big time golf. It's certainly not a Ryder Cup. And we've had, you know, five years since the last Ryder Cup in the USA. So the crowd is expectant. They want to, they want to cheer for something. And if the US guys give them something to cheer about for on Friday, then that momentum, the word we always hear in the Ryder Cup, momentum, it's the most common word we hear all the time. It's there for a reason, because if that gets on their side, then they could be hard to overcome. So for me, Europe will be good, Carlos, but Team USA, it's all about them. They'll set the tone. And if they are up to doing that, then they might very well win back the Ryder Cup. But if they don't quite hit that level, then this European team, you know, there's enough now, some experience there to pick off some of these guys and keep it tight. And then it could be a very, very close finish on Sunday. But I say, Carlos, it's a very strong American team and the, the pressure is on them. Uh, if they can embrace that and fill their potential, then it could be a great day for America on Sunday. But you know, time will tell. Time will tell. And like uh, Ian Poulter said in a show, on the PGA Tour show and Sirius XM, he said, you know, it's for us to enjoy and for the Americans to figure out because there's that secret <laughs> sauce that we've done through the, through the time and build it there. Uh, and uh, the Americans, uh, you know, Dustin Johnson, it, it's all about this attitude. Dustin Johnson, one of the best players went on. Uh, and definitely, but does he have really the attitude to be that leader? Because if you come to think about it, Fred, the veterans really here are Dustin Johnson and Jordan Spieth. They're the only two players that have played at least three Ryder Cups. Uh, then you have Brooks Koepka and Bryson and DeChamba. But then that, that feud, even though they have said you we're going to put it aside for the Ryder Cup, that's going to be there. The so Steve Stricker is going to have to see. I've always say there's no one you can pair Bryson DeChambeau with that is going to be productive. So I don't know. That's going to be an issue because, of course, how what you're going to do with that. Brooks Kepka, on the other hand, he, he injured his wrist hitting a root in Eastlake. Uh, but even then, before that, I mean, he says he's going to be fine right now. Everything's is going to be good. But even then, he said that, you know, the, going to the Ryder Cup is odd, is hectic, takes him out of uh, his routine because of the team element. So, and then Asinger said, ah, oh, he doesn't like the, the Ryder Cup. He, he should give his spot to somebody else <laughs> who does like it. So, again, those kind of things are the things that influence that chemistry in the U.S. team. Do they have it, really? Uh, I think that's why the rookies that we see here, and I, and that's where I would say, yes, they should play them because they do want to play for the, for the U.S. team. They do want to play the Ryder Cup. Now, would they be enough? That would be the question for me. Yeah, we got the, uh, we got the pods uh, listing today, too. So this gives us a little bit more insight into uh, who is going to be paired with who because you're pretty much going to play in their pod. So the first one is Brooks, Tony Finau, Daniel Berger, and Harris English. So I see possibly Brooks and Finau playing together and maybe Berger and English playing together a little bit. 
Yeah. And then in the next one, you've got uh, JT and Jordan, which, you know, Kieran talked about playing together. And then you've got Bryce and Scheffler. So it looks like Scheffler is going to be maybe the sacrificial lamb. He's the lowest rank. So he gets stuck with uh, he gets stuck with Bryson, maybe. And then the other pod is Dustin Johnson, Colin, Xavier, uh, Xander, and Cantley. So, and that, that, that fits right in. We're talking about Xander playing with, uh, with Cantley. And then you could put Colin and DJ together, especially for four ball. Mm -hmm. DJ and Colin would make a great pairing in four balls. So uh, we get some idea from that. Uh, give you an idea on the weather this week. It's going to be in the 60s. It's going to be a little breezy, but it's going to be dry. There's no rain. So I don't know that that favors one team over another. And the other factor I want to say is we got no Phil and we got no Tiger. That's the first time that's happened like forever uh, that uh, either one of those guys have not been on uh, playing on the Ryder Cup team. Now, Phil is there. Tiger is going to address the team. Uh, he's not going to fly to Whistling and be there in person, but uh, he's going to give a little talk. Stricker does not like motivational speeches and that kind of stuff, so he's not doing any of that stuff. Uh, it's all about preparation for Strix. That's how he that's how he played. That's what he wants. That's why they came in last week in a practice, and they're preparing now, and they're going to be the best prepared when they hit the tee on Friday morning. Yeah, if Tiger would have been Carlos, there. Here's a, here, here, here's a stat for you here. So you know, Fred mentioned there that this is the first U.S. team in the Ryder Cup, you know, forever, not to have Tiger or Phil on it. The last time neither of those two guys were on the team, Raymond Floyd was on the American side. And he'll turn 80 next year. That's how long ago it's been since then. I know, I know Ray Floyd played quite old in the Ryder Cup, but that's a long time ago. And that shows you how the longevity of Woods and Mickelson. So... It's a changing of the guard, Carlos. And uh, you know what? That might not be a bad thing for the USA. It may not be, but definitely looks bright. I think that if one thing the team from the US has better maybe on the on paper, on paper, is that those players that are changing the guard looks to have a better upside than what the team Europe might have. When they maybe have a better attitude as well. Uh, it looks like, I mean, this young guy is uh, definitely, I would say, uh, half what it takes attitude-wise. Take Bryson DeChambeau out of there, and they'll, they'll be fine. But anyway, thank you for joining us again. Hope you find uh, our take on Team USA really good. You'll see. Then you can, you know, trash us or whatever it is afterwards if we were on point. But anyway, thank you for joining us. Trash Kerry and East from Scotland, it doesn't matter. I, I don't read comments. I don't read comments. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. It's our pleasure to be here. Thank you.